Hey everyone, um, finally a sunny day here in Oslo. It's quite cold though, but the sauna community is very strong, as always. Today, before sitting down to work, I just wanted to do a little bit of photosynthesis if I can, because the days are getting so short. Lots of work getting done this week at work as well, but in this vlog I'm gonna try to make some progress with my side project, that little email client app that I'm working on, since I got a lot of encouraging comments from you guys in the last vlog. I'm trying to distill the essence of what an email client should be. I mean it's easy to just invent features left and right and make yet another bloated app, but it's much harder to think of the minimum feature set that gets the job done. Also, it's very important to make sure that the features you do have are polished and intuitive, and so this is why I'm spending so much time working on drag and drop. And here's what I have so far. I'm trying to allow the user to create folders to organize the conversations. Drag and drop, man, at least it's a very decent coding interview question for our front-end dev. So many little edge cases and fun with state management. Also, another good one is a tree view, both of which I have here. At great risk, I decided to do some minor refactoring. You know, recording these vlogs is kinda hard, I'm not gonna lie, because I do all the coding live, and the temptation to refactor is quite high, but that is very dangerous, because even though it would be very realistic, I can't make a video about taking some mediocre code that doesn't really work and turning it into slightly different code that still doesn't work. It would be far nicer to have something to demo. But I live in the real world where the coffee shop closes at a fixed time, the camera battery is not infinite, so anytime I decide to refactor, I have no idea if I will finish it in time to have anything to show before they kick me out. So I put a lot of faith in this coffee. But for now, here's a quick demo of the freshly refactored code. It works flawlessly, entirely as designed. I spent some more time trying to fix the obvious bugs and dreaming about the day that I will have three daily active users on the app, out of which nobody will ever ever attempt to test the edge cases that I'm fixing right now. But hey, with great excitement I made this commit right here and it was just in time to get going. By the way, this video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Many companies use our internet traffic to determine where we are, who we are with, for how long we stayed there, and what we did online. And it really feels great to use a VPN and know for a fact that you're not being tracked and profiled everywhere you go. One more thing, by changing your location you can unlock geo-restricted content and even get better prices for online bookings like airplane tickets or hotels. Surfshark also comes with advanced tools like the antivirus, alert and search to further improve your internet security. So if you use the code WITHMARK you can get up to 6 additional months for free for the Black Friday deal. Alright, so on the way back home, I thought of at least a thousand edge cases with my current implementation, so I decided to do another refactor. But let me show you what the problem actually is. Alright, so here's what we have here. So imagine you have like four folders and you want to create like a tree structure. So for example, you want to nest B inside of A and maybe C inside of B and so on. So how do you model this in your data? So there are two ways generally, one of them was initially obvious to me so I went for that and basically it looks something like this, you create a new uh, folder and you give an ID and a name and then you give it a list of children so you say children is a list of folders. And you can easily model such a structure with this simple approach. However, there is a problem with this. So let's say that in the future, I actually want to support having multiple devices with this app and maybe syncing your state and settings across them. And when you want to sync states of arrays or lists, it becomes very tricky because let's say that I want to reorder or maybe create another nesting. 
it becomes very difficult to sync your latest change without having to send the entire list over. And this is a problem that many people encountered before, and I actually figured out the solution a long time ago by watching a talk from Google on how they made Google Docs, and they talked about this issue specifically. So the solution that they proposed is that instead of saving the list of your children, you actually save a reference to your parent. So you say parent ID is maybe a string. You know, top level items will not have a parent, so it's optional. And if you want to reorder things and maybe put a folder inside of another folder, really you only need to update the parent ID property of that folder, which is really nice. However, there is a problem. Lists actually have a built in ordering, like a sort. But if you're just storing the parent ID, you don't really know in which order the children of that folder will appear. So what you need to do is actually you need to add another property, which I can call index for now. But what's really interesting is that this one doesn't really have to be an integer because any number that you can sort is totally fine. And so what happens is they actually introduced a really nice trick where you use floating point numbers to define positions in between two elements. So let's say that I have another folder like folder E that I want to drop in between folder B and folder C. So how do you do that? But if you actually introduce a new value that is exactly halfway there, or maybe with some variation halfway between B and C, the only value you need to set is the index value and the parent value of the folder E. And that is very convenient because not only does it minimize the payload size when you need to sync things across the network, but it also minimizes the likelihood of having conflicts because the more data you need to sync across, it's more likely that there are going to be conflicting changes. For example, let's say that on another device, Device, I have this folder D as well and then here I added folder E but on another device I actually just reordered B and C so if that happened on another device while it lost network it would be very difficult to determine which is the final state if I was syncing the entire array and it could easily happen that just because a change is newer it my folder E would disappear because it would get deleted and so to prevent this issue you actually go for setting the index which is in between these values but there is something funny that can happen there and let me show you that so you guys know Trello the little collaboration app with boards and lists well they use the same because they are highly collaborative and you know me being me I actually wanted to see what kind of data they are sending over the network when I go ahead and reorder the cards. If you take a look at one of the requests, in the body they are only sending one position number and they are using quite large integer values instead of a float, but the point is still the same. When I reorder cards, they don't really send the entire list, the only thing they are sending is one number. And this is highly convenient for them, but the edge case becomes when you're trying to actually fit as many items as you can in between the first and the second element. And the reason is because over time you will actually exhaust the number of values between those two numbers. And then I noticed, at least the last time that I tested, that at some point Trello will actually reset the entire list because you can force it. You can just go ahead and like drop all these cards in between and at some point you will go through all the available values and Trello will just reset them all. So this is not a problem that I have to deal with in my app because I'm not yet syncing things across devices. So I have the luxury when I drop something in between two items, for example this folder right here, I just sort everything by the index and then I reset all indices every single time. But in the future when I start working with multiple devices, I'm actually going to have to be a little bit more careful with that. So yeah, this was the refactor that I did. And so having that one done, I'm actually more excited about what happens next with my app. Hopefully I can actually make the messages feature work and maybe you can reply or read your emails. Maybe that would be a good feature for an email client. So if you enjoyed this one, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps me a lot on YouTube and I'll see you in the next one.